We are with Mr. David Beatonville, mm -hmm. Vice President of Research and Development at Liu Gong. Mm -hmm. yes. Thanks for being with us and sharing your precious time. My pleasure. In the last eight years, the product of Liu Gong moved a lot forward when we're talking about R&D and design. So tell us a little bit about the success behind that. Well, if, if you go back uh, 10 years or more in Lugong's history, we were primarily a wheel loader company with some excavators. Uh, then about 10 years ago, we really started expanding into different product lines. And as we did that, we put a process in place to make all of the R&D systems similar across product lines. And we started uh, using common parts between the product lines, uh, generally enforcing a uh, uh, a pattern of similarity everywhere. At the same time, we started doing uh, intensive industrial design and we set up our industrial design office in the UK, uh, which gave a consistent language to all of the products. When we're talking about reliability, um, you've been growing just as well. So how did you get Liu Gong to get there? Well, reliability is all really all about engineering. I mean, you have to start at the beginning, understand what you're designing, why you're designing it, calculate, and that's the most important thing. Engineers calculate and, uh, uh, and put together a good design from the very beginning. But then after that, uh, reliability need, needs to be proven. So we have set up extensive reliability testing, uh, a very sophisticated test center in Lujol that allows us to do full performance testing and reliability testing uh, at accelerated speeds. How many R&D organizations do you have worldwide and how is the headquarter supporting those overseas departments? Well we have a, a central R&D organization which is kind of the umbrella that, that oversees everything in the R&D organization. Then every product line has its own R&D uh, organization and we have regional R&D in all areas where we're present outside of China. Uh, today that would be an R&D organization in Poland, in India, in North America, the UK, and starting one in Brazil. We have at any given time between 900 and 1,000 engineers total uh, in Lugong, so it's a, it's a pretty big team to keep focused. This industry is growing faster and faster, so a lot of those products in the industry, as well um, as the competitors, are, are having more similarities to each other. How do you differentiate? Yeah, it, it's interesting what's happening in the industry because uh, uh, when I was young in the industry, the, the life cycle of a product model would be maybe 10 years or even 15 years. But now that's shortening and shortening and uh, you know, every five years at least you have to have a significant upgrade to your product. And of course emissions requirements around the world are driving some of that. Uh, but still the competition is moving faster and faster. Technology is changing faster and faster. The products themselves, the performance, it's true they're becoming closer and closer. I mean in, in some ways we're getting close to a commodity environment in terms of product performance. But the differences that, that we make uh, are in uh, customer features. Uh, and one of the big ones that we really focus on is serviceability. And we started this uh, a long time ago, when, you know, shortly after I joined the company in 2007, 2008 timeframe. We realized that at the time, we were behind but we could make a big difference in serviceability and become best in the class in serviceability only by paying attention to details that would make it easier for our customers. So we've carried that philosophy on. We still focus a lot on serviceability. Uh, we focus on uh, operator comfort features. Uh, if you sit in a wheel order, it will feel very similar to sitting into a Lugong excavator, which will feel very similar to sitting even in a Lugong skid steer, which is a completely different size class. So we try to drive consistency across all of the product lines and focus on, on areas that aren't directly related to performance, but that are important to a customer. In the emerging markets nowadays, um, the price is going down and down. So uh, what are you doing to to cope with this? 
I mean, in, in any healthy economy, price competition is important. So we, we welcome the pressure on price. Uh, it forces us to be improve our efficiency in R&D, both in the process uh, and in terms of the components we use, and in, you know, just our overall designs have to become more and more efficient. Now today, uh, material sciences is improving. The steels that we get for special applications are improving. Things like bearings uh, uh, are much better than they were in the past and, and can be produced much more efficiently. Uh, component technology, you know, the higher end components, engine technology, hydraulic technology, all of that is improving at the same rate. Uh, within Lugong, a lot of what we do to uh, uh, improve our design efficiency is commonality across product lines. So we try to use, for example, the same hydraulic pump in many, many different applications. Drives the volume up, makes it simpler for our dealers for servicing the machine, but at the same time our volume's high enough that we can command a pretty good price from suppliers. And we just repeat that throughout the whole cycle wherever we can. Lugan aims to be world-class at construction equipment. How do you, with your R&D department, supporting this? Well, I, I mentioned at the beginning that we, we have a fairly rigid product development process, the Lugan development process. And the first step in that process is the product definition. And uh, I, I guess you could almost say a motto that I have, if your product definition is good, then your product is going to be good. So that means that during the product definition we need to be out in the market in different places in the world, different conditions, understanding exactly what it is customers want to see in the future, at the same time talking to universities, talking to suppliers to understand what they're doing, you know, looking forward and figuring out what, what fits and then bringing it back and putting it all into a cohesive plan of this is what we want the new product to be. If you get that right, everything else is easy. Big issue these days is um, electrification. What do you think? How long will the diesel engine be still around and, and what are you doing about it? Well, I think it's a, a very positive trend. I think very definitely ele electric is going to be very important to our future. Uh, there are other alternative energy. Hydrogen uh, will be bigger than it is today. But I do think the mainstream is going to settle on electric in the future. And really, it, it, uh, how fast it comes to our industry de all depends on what goes, happens with the battery pricing. I mean, the faster the battery prices come down, the, the faster we'll see it adopted in the machines. And, and the lower battery prices go, the bigger machines will, go, will convert to electric. Another very important topic in the industry is the intelligent machine. Are you having such, and, and what do you think about this? Well, intelligent machine is, uh, I think, a little bit of a misnomer. Um, it can mean a lot of things. I mean, when somebody talks about an intelligent machine, machine today, quite frequently what they're talking about is just the, the machine's ability to collect data about itself and transmit it somewhere where, you know, you can do whatever you want with the data. Uh, but there are other parts of the intelligent machine story, autonomous machinery, we're seeing more and more of that. Of course, it's been relatively common in large mines in, in uh, uh, areas where the environment is very controlled. Uh, uh, it's, it's widely used. But now we're starting to see that type of technology uh, in road building, building for example. Uh, uh, rollers will become autonomous, so it will drive itself, but it will also figure out when the, the road surface is compacted enough and when it's ready to move on to the next area. So there's uh, literally thousands of directions that uh, intelligent machinery will start to come into, into our industry.